Hi, my name's Mark Fulcher, and in this clip we're going to learn how to examine the knee. So we've got Martine with us. Martine, if we get you to start by just doing some walking. So we're looking at Martine's gait, looking to see if she has any problems walking and whether there's any evidence of an intelligent gait. And uh, she's obviously walking fairly comfortably. The next thing I like to do in standing is get the athlete to do a squat on one leg, a single leg knee bend. So if we get you on one leg, Martine, we're just going to get you to squat up and down. So the things I'm looking at from the front is is she able to keep her pelvis nice and level? Um, and is her knee heading inward? So, or is her knee able to stay nice and lined up over her foot, which is desirable? So Martine's got good pelvic alignment there and her knee tracks nicely over her second toe. Are you able to show us what, what not so good looks like, Martine? So knee dropping inwards, pelvis wobbling around. So it's a good functional test to assess how the knee is moving in space. So Martin, we might get you to hop up on the, uh, the end of the bed here and lie down. Lying on the bed here, we just, it's a good opportunity to have a look at the knees, have a look to see if there's any obvious swelling or scars or skin changes. We can see that Martine has an old surgical scar over her right knee here. And I like to pick up her heels and see whether her knees will drop into normal extension, whether there's a block to extension or any pain with that. And you can see that they're both very symmetric there. Then uh, we're going to examine Martine's right knee here. So I'm going to add extension and a bit of overpressure. So when someone has joint disease, often the knee doesn't move very well and it becomes painful or restricted towards the end of the range. So that seems to be painless and extends normally. I'm going to flex right up and see whether we can achieve full flexion, whether there's any pain or problems. And we're having a look at Martine's face to make sure that she's feeling comfortable. And then what I do in extension is have a look for an effusion. So it's a little different to the look-feel move that you may be used to, but I think this is a good start to finish way to examine the knee. So effusion, we're doing a swipe test. We swipe upwards, pushing any fluid up into the suprapatellar pouch, and then we swipe down on the outside, looking for a bulge in the medial knee here. So swiping up, and then down the outside, swiping down. We can also palpate for an effusion. Sometimes a larger effusion, you don't have such a nice swipe, so we can see, is the knee feel full relative to the other side? Or we can do a patella tap test when the knee is very swollen. So we have a hand above the knee, pushing fluid down into the knee proper, pushing the patella, see whether we can push it down, tapping on the femur underneath. So that's how to look for an effusion. Then I like to bend the knee up to 90 degrees, comfortable in that position. And so this is the best position, I think, to palpate the major landmarks around the knee. So I start at the medial femoral condyle, so that's where the medial ligament attaches and where that, that spot can be tender when someone injures their medial ligament. Then I drop down onto the medial joint space and palpate the medial joint line. So that's generally tender if someone has a meniscal tear or a chondral defect in the medial compartment. Round onto the tibial tuberosity, which is tender when an athlete has osgood schlauder's disease. Palpate along the patella tendon and around the inferior pole of the patella, proximal patella tendon, which is the site people have tenderness when they have patella tendinopathy. And then around the lateral knee joint line, superior tib fib joint. And we can also palpate around the patella and the quadriceps tendon. So we've palpated fairly extensively there. I then take the knee back into extension. In an extended position, the patella is more mobile and we can also palpate the patella tendon a little bit better, and we can elevate the inferior pole of the patella so we can palpate the deeper surface of the patella tendon. In athletes with patella tendinopathy, that's often much more provocative than palpating the knee with the knee flexed. So having done that, I now assess the ligaments in the knee. So first we're gonna assess the collateral ligaments. So with the medial ligament, we apply a, a valgus stress. So first with the knee in extension, is there any laxity or pain? Then we take the knee into 30 degrees of flexion, valgus force, any pain or problems with that. So that's rock solid. Similarly for the lateral ligament, we're going to take the knee in extension and a varus force. And then 30 degrees knee flexion and a varus force. And so we can feel a good end point, no pain or problems with those tests. If there's laxity in extension, we're thinking a much more significant injury than if there's laxity with 30 degrees knee flexion. Our next test is Lockman's test. That's a way to assess the anterior cruciate ligament. So to do that, we need to stabilize the thigh. We need to make sure Martin's nice and relaxed. And we're trying to move the tibia anteriorly relative to the femur. So we grab the tibia and we're pulling anteriorly. 
and we can feel a nice solid endpoint. Hopefully you can see that too. If you've injured your ACL, then there's no firm endpoint that's very lax and it can be uncomfortable. People with large thighs, that can be quite hard to do to uh, examine the knee. So a useful technique is to use your thigh to support the femur. So we want to explain what we're doing. Martin, do you mind if I put my leg under your leg? So we've got nice control over there. The thigh is sitting comfortably on my leg. Patient usually feels more comfortable with the knee flexed a little bit. And we do the same sort of movement. If someone's injured their anterior cruciate ligament, there's also another test called a pivot shift test, which sometimes is pretty difficult to do when the athlete's knee is sore and is more easily done uh, under anaesthetic, but it's still worth trying to do. And basically the test tries to replicate the sensational feeling that the athlete has when they tear their ACL. So to do this test, we take the heel, put the leg into internal rotation, apply a valgus stress, and we take the knee from a position of full extension up into flexion. So internal tibial rotation, valgus stress, extension to flexion. And that should reproduce a, a clunking, disconcerting feeling that is something like what the patient felt when they ruptured their ACL. The la next ligament test we're going to do is a, an anterior draw or posterior draw test. So we bend the knee up to 90 degrees. Again, we, we have to get the patient's permission. I'm going to sit in your foot. So we don't want to just jump on their foot because it gives them a fright. So sit on your foot and what I'm going to do is pull first anteriorly and then posteriorly. So anteriorly, solid endpoint, no laxity there. Posterior draw, looking at the PCL, very solid, no laxity, no pain. If we think the patient may have a PCL injury, we can do a different test looking for a posterior sag. So we flex both knees up so they're sitting next to each other and we have a look at the tibial tubercles to see whether they're sitting at the same level. If a patient's injured their PCL, we may see one of the tibia sitting more posteriorly relative to the normal or contralateral side. Having done that, we're now going to move on to do some meniscal tests. So the premise or basis for all these tests is, can we capture the injured meniscus between a flexed thigh and the tibia? So um, any sort of test that has a degree of knee flexion and rotation can aggravate the meniscus. So one test is to palpate the, the joint line, have your fingers on the medial and lateral joint line, and to simply just tibial, rotate the tibia, so internal and external rotation, and seeing whether that aggravates the patient's pain. McMurray's test involves full flexion, valgus, and rotation, or full flexion, internal rotation, and uh, a varus force moving from flexion to extension. So that's McMurray's test. The patellofemoral joint is also a common cause of knee pain. So there are a few different things that can happen with the patellofemoral joint. The first is patella, uh, patellofemoral dysfunction or patellofemoral pain. And that's quite a, a difficult diagnosis sometimes because the, the pain is very vague and nonspecific. So a test where we compress the patellofemoral joint can be quite a useful thing. So we basically apply a downwards or a compressive force through the patella with our thumbs as we gently flex and extend the knee. And we're seeing whether that reproduces any of the patient's pain or problems. So is that a provocative thing? Does that reproduce something akin to your pain? And the problem with that is it's often very sensitive and very provocative. So we have to be sure that it's reproducing the patient's problem um, and it's also a different feeling to the other side. So is that aggravating the patient's symptoms? The other test that we can do is looking for patellar instability, so the patellar apprehension test. So when people dislocate their kneecap, they dislocate laterally almost always. So can we push the patella laterally as we're flexing and extending the knee? And a positive test is not so much pain, it's more a sensation that something bad is going to happen. So is the, the knee feeling like it's going to dislocate? Having done that, we're going to get Martine to roll onto her tummy into a prone position. And lying prone, we can inspect the popliteal fossa, looking to see if there's any swelling. So is there a Baker cyst? Is there any obvious asymmetry between the two? And there are two tests that uh, are worth considering in prone. So the first one is the grind test, the Apley grind test. So it's a meniscal test. We stabilize the femur apply an axial load through the, the heel and through the lower leg, 
and we move the leg into external and internal rotation, seeing whether that aggravates the patient's symptoms. So these are very non-sensitive or low sensitivity tests. The final test to have a look at is the dial test. So this is a useful test if someone's had a more significant injury and you think they may have injured the postlateral corner structures in the knee. So we take both feet, flex the knees to about 30 degrees, and then externally rotate those feet. So we're looking for any asymmetry, and if there's an increase in external rotation of more than 10 degrees, then you think that there may be an isolated postlateral corner injury. If you take the knees up to 90 degrees and there's an increase in laxity in this position, we're thinking that there might be an isolated postlateral corner injury and a posterior cruciate ligament injury. So that's quite a lot to get through, but that's the approach I take to examining a footballer with an injured knee.